Get your attention, please. We're going to start in on our program. Uh, please continue to eat, enjoy your lunch. Uh, we just want to honor everybody's time and make sure that we give our speakers adequate time for their presentation. So uh, on behalf of the Eden Prairie Chamber of Commerce, my name is Pat Mulquinney, and I want to thank you all for coming out today. Uh, Greg Olson, our host here at Bear Path, just informed me that um, due to the cold, they just closed the driving range. I know a lot of you had asked me earlier about getting out there, but that um, is no longer available for us. So, uh, but in all seriousness, thank you all for coming out. We had to um, wing a couple things coming upstairs. Downstairs a little cold, if you consider 60, 65 degrees cold. So hopefully you're enjoying our uh, beautiful upstairs, a little warmer. Um, for those of you who tried calling our offices or emailing us, um, Comcast is down in our building. So, uh, so if we ignored you, it wasn't on purpose, uh, just we never got your message. So um, anyway, moving right along. Um, today's program is one of our favorites. It is the State of the City program where we give the opportunity to highlight all great things about Eden Prairie. And of course, we do have many great things to brag about. So uh, I do want to thank our sponsors who make this program possible and have them stand. Uh, Commuter Services, Wings Financial, and Excel Energy. If representatives would all stand, let's give them a round of applause. If uh, you did not have a chance to stop by their booths, please do so. I know Excel, it's a great time to learn how to save money on energy at this time of year. Uh, but anyway, moving on, the um, opportunity here too is, of course, we bring together a wide variety of individuals for this program. If you have not met somebody new, please do so before you leave today. Uh, we have representatives from the school, the city, the chamber, our major employers, um, and elected officials uh, beyond our community as well. So jumping in, want to thank my board members that are here today and able to join us. Um, Brian Hennon, C.H. Robinson, thank you for being here. I know Jeff Williamson couldn't make it. Both Brian and Jeff, I'm doing a shout out because they helped us find our new office space. And then Brian was kind enough to help me, um, I shouldn't say help me, you actually did all the work, dismantle some of our furniture to get it into our office, so thank you. Um, also, Josh Swanson, our superintendent, serves on our board of directors. Uh, Pat Devine, LTR Digital, I didn't see him, not sure if he made it. And then Michael Scholl from Starkey, not sure if he made it, but I know he was planning to. Um, also great to have Hennepin County Commissioner Jan Callison with us today. Thank you, Commissioner. And then also want to recognize uh, Zach Rodvold, who's the Chief of Staff for Congressman Dean Phillips. I know he had to duck out at some point. Not sure if he was able to stay. All right. And um, I know our city and school pre presenters will highlight their leadership teams as well. So. Moving right along, a couple chamber updates for you. The after hours is tomorrow, so the city and the chamber are hosting a special presentation tomorrow evening at city offices. Uh, every three years or so, the city does a business-wide survey, and the presentation will be tomorrow night. So 4.30 in the Heritage Rooms, we'll have a social hour afterwards. I know the mayor, council members, city staff, and some of our businesses will be there. Uh, join us, it is free of charge and gives a unique snapshot of what our businesses say in regards to the survey that the city just completed. Um, moving on, February 1st is the third part of our business success series, so this Friday, uh, we will be hearing from JCD Promotions and Carrie Dreffel. She'll be presenting on the website, so focused on business websites and how to have your business found online. Uh, registration is still open for that, but we do got to get numbers in shortly. So if you could, register by the end of the day tomorrow. Uh, anyone here make it to our first power hour at Pizza Luce? I see a couple hands. Uh, if you have not been, Power Hour is a new program for us. That was our first one as we kicked off. It's going to be the first Thursday of the month. 
Um, our next one is at Crave, so a week from tomorrow, so Thursday, February 7th. It is a free event, 4.30 to 5.30, uh, great networking. Our host provides us appetizers and a cash bar, and uh, the Pizza Luce event did sell out, so we would highly encourage you to register early and not be left out in the cold. How's that? Um, and then finally, February 14th is Valentine's Day, but it is also the kickoff of our women's networking program. So we will have a breakfast at Tavern 4 and 5. Our speaker is author Louise Griffith, and her discussion will be You Are Worth It. And she's got some great books out there. Uh, we hope you can join us for that event as well. Um, with that, I'm going to move into the PowerPoint presentation for the State of the City. And... Um, keep us on track here okay so talking about the chamber and I won't spend tons of time on some of these slides and get to the, some of the highlight points for us uh, you see our mission and vision uh, mission we are leaders for community prosperity and advocates for business chamber is a private nonprofit business association that serves the Eden Prairie area uh, we have 400 members, and within that membership base, they represent over 34,000 area employees. Um, we also put on, uh, some would say, too many events, and some would say, we love your events, you should do more. Um, my staff would probably say we do just the right amount, uh, <laughs> at least when they go well. Um, but you'll see some of the key highlights of our programs from last year. This clearly isn't all of them. But we had the Future Workforce Luncheon. This was one of our beer partnership programs. We had over 200 people come out uh, to hear former Governor Tim Pawlenty talk about the workforce of the future. Uh, we had our Young Professionals event in April of last year. We had over 150 young professionals from across the region. We even had uh, some come all the way from Nebraska for that event. Uh, we also did a Kickstart Your Business program. This was a very unique program. Uh, we had about 80 of our business people come to Buka for a free lunch and to hear from uh, an Action Coach business speaker that gave some just great tips for our businesses. And then our big fundraising event last year was Rock the Barn. And um, I don't know if the chamber likes to pick days that we just have unique weather, uh, but if you were at that event, we had three inches of rain that night, and uh, it was fun anyways. So it was a great event, and we were glad that everybody could turn out. Um, moving into some of our strategic goals, and talking about bold leadership, highlighted Young Professionals Summit. This, is, this was our third year, our fourth year this year um, in providing unique opportunities for young professionals to learn from experts from other businesses and, and take those skills and knowledge back to their employers and utilize them in the jobs that they have. One other unique program that we do, we were the first chamber in the nation to offer what we call our student membership program. It really is the future leaders program. Um, we have 20 high school students that participate in that. Uh, we also help connect our students and businesses through the Career Expo and College Expo we did this past fall. Uh, we had over 60 businesses participate and we had 900 students from the high school attend that. As I mentioned, our high school students, and I know we have some of those here today, so I'm going to have them quickly stand. Don't be shy, otherwise I'll call you by name. <laughs> if you have not had the chance to meet some of these students, whoop, I'm going too far ahead. It is kind of a unique privilege for our organization because when we started this, we weren't sure how this exactly would go and in the students' experience and how they would interact. Um, but for those of you who attend numerous programs, you see the students throughout that. And, and we want to build their experience with us. We want them to find uh, unique opportunities with their business community, uh, job shadows, business um, help that they can do, take on business projects. Uh, we've actually had some of our student members find job shadows, do internships, find jobs. I know, Troy, you have one of those success stories for us. Um, and that's what we want to do. We want our young professionals to understand the opportunities that we have in Eden Prairie 
have them go on, get the training and skills that they need, and then come back here and be the future leaders for our, our businesses in Eden Prairie. Um, moving on to advocacy, and this is a key dynamic for us. Um, the chamber does take positions on a number of items, and uh, we have a handout that was, as you came in today, on our priorities for the 2019 session. Um, last year, I was fortunate enough to testify on the fiscal disparities bill that Representative Loon had presented. If you are unfamiliar with fiscal disparities, Eden Prairie does not gain from this, meaning taxes collected off of our businesses here are redistributed to other communities. And um, we always look for an opportunity to use, utilize those dollars in a different way. And one of those ways that we think would be a key opportunity for all of us is taking a few of those dollars and investing them in metro transportation projects. So we're not giving up hope on that, but that is an item that um, we would love to see changed. And uh, I know the city would as well. Um, you'll see our 2018 priorities, and uh, you'll see also see 2019 priorities. Some of these overlap. You may recall that a number of bills were vetoed last year by the governor and still has work left undone. Uh, we've already um, met with our newly elected officials to talk about our priorities and focus those opportunities this year with the new legislature and the new governor. Um, in terms of our third strategic goal around prosperity, you know, in terms of the simplest way to describe this, we need our businesses to be successful. And, and I think our city and school district would say the same thing, that um, strength of the organization uh, for our businesses translates to tax dollars for the city and schools and opportunities for our youth uh, here in Eden Prairie. There's a number of things we do, and I'm, again, not going to go into everything we do, but we publish uh, an item that we would call Discover Eden Prairie. It is more or less a visitor's guide that is distributed through our hotels uh, and new residents coming to the community. We have tied this in uh, the last few years with the Super Bowl, the Ryder Cup, and this year, of course, with the NCAA tournament um, coming to the Twin Cities area. Prosperity probably, and I know Rick's going to talk a little bit about some of these projects as well. Uh, we are very excited that Shields is opening one of their signature stores here in 2020. Uh, if you were wondering what was being built at the old Sears location at the mall, it is the new Shields store. Um, it's only 250,000 square feet uh, for everybody to go shop and enjoy. It'll be an entertainment destination as well with a Ferris wheel inside, aquariums. Um, it will uniquely change uh, Eden Prairie in the shopping center and um, draw people from 150 mile radius to Eden Prairie for that shopping experience. And then the other big project, of course, is Southwest LRT. The Chamber's been a strong proponent of that uh, based on feedback from our businesses. Um, they look for opportunities to bring employees to Eden Prairie, and Southwest LRT is one of those opportunities. And you'll see um, throughout the year, we'll put on a number of different programs that help businesses connect, whether that's through networking or building business, um, uh, uh, networking opportunities and build your business network with the individuals you meet. Moving on to our annual survey and highlighting what our members told us. Uh, 2018 was a, was a strong year economically for our businesses. 70% of our respondents saw an increase in their net income and only 16% were down. 10% uh, saw a reduction in employee counts, but 44% grew. Uh, 2019, 88% of our businesses that responded say they expect their sales to grow. Um, in terms of their ability to find quality employees, the big thing here is 28% are having difficulties. And when we talk a, a little bit more about that, um, the bi biggest difficulty we hear is um, trades. If you hear from our plumbers, our painters, uh, anybody in the trade industry really does struggle to find skilled labor. 
Um, also mentioned were engineers, nursing, accounting, and bookkeepers, all very difficult to find. And then one of our uh, individual respondents, and this I can echo when we go out and meet with businesses, is they just look for somebody that has the right personality, the skills, and the desire to work, and then they'll train them from there. So when we talk about tough to find employees, our businesses really want somebody that they can bring on board, that are willing to work, willing to learn, and they can teach them the rest of those skill sets. When we talk about the economy, 48% um, say yes, it's on the right track, and 42% say it's, they're uncertain if it's on the right track. Good thing is not a lot of negativity here, but it is an interesting note that the uncertainty is so high amongst our businesses. The number one issue impacting our businesses, um, educated workforce, probably not a surprise there. Um, the Chamber continues as we've highlighted some of our programs trying to connect our businesses more and more with students. Um, this goes beyond colleges now. More and more of the businesses are looking for opportunities to get into high schools, help those kids understand the career paths that are available for them, and then um, work with them on the training they will need after they graduate. Number two is taxes. We hear this numerous times over and over from our businesses. Taxes are too high. Uh, recent survey placed uh, Minnesota as the number one, meaning a negative, uh, business tax state in the nation. And then number three was government regulation. Um, on local issues, feedback was on transportation, LRT, the pros and cons of LRT, we will have a three-year construction process plan. I know, again, Rick, you'll cover a little bit of that. Um, the Chamber will cover that at a future program when we bring the Met Council out to discuss it as well and give some updates. In terms of facilities, 32% of our businesses that responded are looking to expand uh, this coming year, and 42% not expecting to expand. So. Uh, again, this is a strong number historically compared to what we've heard from businesses uh, over the past few years. And then revenue, um, again, very positive. The revenue uh, expecting to grow, employment expecting to grow amongst our business community. And then one of the things we asked about was things that people like about Eden Prairie. Probably no, no surprise here, love the sense of community, love the schools. Great city with diverse, well-educated population, strong business community, some concern on empty retail space uh, here in Eden Prairie. Um, one thing that I keep highlighting, and, and uh, I cannot confirm nor deny that there's a brewery being discussed for Eden Prairie, um, but I keep dying to be able to announce it's official, and I can't make that announcement today. Maybe Rick can. I'll, I'll see. Uh, and then finally, Talking about 2019 events not to miss, um, we have some great programs coming up. The big one right away is our Home and Garden Show coming up March 16th. If you are a business that wants to get in front of local residents, it's a great venue for that. We typically have over 1,500 of our residents um, participate in that Saturday program. And then for us, uh, it's our 50th anniversary year, so we have some big plans that you'll be seeing more and more about this. We will be right back here on Thursday, April 18th for the big celebration dinner. We have the CEO of C.H. Robinson, John Wehoff, speaking that night. Um, if you don't know this, C.H. Robinson is our local Fortune 500 headquartered company. So if you don't know them, you should. Uh, they're, I think, number two in our major employers in the number of people that they employ for us. Um, Final things for us, events not to miss, new event for us, talked about workforce issues, businesses hiring. We are doing a job fair on April 23rd, 7.30 to 10 a.m. up at the high school. It's a new opportunity for us to, to partner with the high school and Josh's team. We're very excited about that. Uh, if you're looking to hire high school kids for the summer, please let us know about this. You'll be getting sign-up information in the coming weeks for that program. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Josh himself, our school superintendent, who's going to give highlights and information on school activities. Just not today, because they're closed. <laughs> Thank you, Pat. Yeah, thank Appreciate you. that.
take just a moment here to flip to All right. Let me pull this forward. Well, thank you, Pat. And I think, you know, I appreciate the highlights of the partnership because I so appreciate that. And it's really fun to be here today to talk a little bit about the district and some of the things that are going on. Um, but I think this, this event is really representative of the great partnership that we do have with the Chamber and the City. I absolutely love getting to work with Pat and Rick, and we partner so closely on so many things. Um, you know, this has been a challenging weather week for a school district. You know, Monday morning we had about six inches of snow that came down. We were able to work with the city all through the night to understand exactly where roads are at. They did an awesome job. We were able to get kids on time to school everywhere, although a two hour late start to do that. But that was, that was just part of what we did, and the, the city did a great job of working with us on that. The ideas coming forward around how do we partner for kids to connect with our business community fits so well with our strategic plan and what we want to see with kids kids and providing them really authentic ways to learn and connect and to see what possibilities are. And so it's a, it's a great um, representation today at this event um, to see that partnership um, come to life. So with that, before I get into some of our content, I want to just do a few introductions. Um, I have the privilege to work with just an absolutely wonderful school board, and we have three members of the board here today. Uh, Elaine Larrabee, our chair of the board. We have Lauren Crandall, who is our vice chair. And we have Holly Link, who's our treasurer for the board. I also, on the daily basis, get to work with an incredibly talented cabinet group. Um, and I'm going to start with um, Dr. Stacy Stanley, who's our assistant superintendent, joined the team officially in the summer, but I saw her tons last spring as she transitioned on, and it's just, she's been a wonderful partner in addition to our team. Uh, Dr. Christina Bamboom, who heads up student support services. Michelle Amet, who heads up our personalized learning department. Jason Munzenberger, who heads up all of our finance and operations. Tom May, who heads up human resources for us. Brett Johnson, who officially starts Monday. He is our new communications, head of communications. Um, Dr. Sean Hoffman-Bram, who many of you may connect with through community things, is unable to be here today. Um, and she's a, she's a great team member there. And then a special thanks to Kelly Keeson, who has been helping as we've transitioned communication and just been a great um, help today and even preparing. And then lastly, we have a new high school principal uh, this year, Rob Virgin, who has joined us today as well. And he's been a great addition to our team as well filling some big shoes. Um, and so with that, um, you know, I'm incredibly proud to get to serve as the superintendent of Eden Prairie Schools and to really keep us focused on our mission to inspire each student every day. And I'm pleased to be here today to share um, the state of the district. And I will tell you the state of the district is extremely good right now. To start with, we're growing. Um, this is the first time in 10 years that we've had increased enrollment, which is absolutely wonderful. We're seeing that increase across, of our, across our schools and grade levels. It's not happening in one place. But we also saw that our kindergarten capture rate this year is the highest it's been in years. People want to be here in Eden Prairie. And people are choosing Eden Prairie schools. That's great news for the schools. It's good news for the community. It's good news for business as well as we bring people to live here in the community and stay connected to the community. As part of our efforts um, and very intentional efforts to, to make sure that we have each new family um, welcome and connected, we've built a welcome center. And what we were able to do is we actually took some existing space and we did some modification um, and we opened that up this past year. It's been just a great place for families to be able to get all kinds of information and connect. We've really made it kind of a one-stop shop model. So when a family comes in, whether you're looking for information around early childhood or community ed events or adult learning um, or connections with community, that they can get that assistance. And so it's a great asset for our new families and our existing families, and it's been a big hit. We've also revamped our tours. And I'd encourage anybody who's interested in learning more about what's taking place inside of our schools to come take a tour. Um, if you're a realtor or a business leader or a community member um, who want to know more about the great work that our staff are doing, come visit us. You can do that by contacting the Welcome Center or on our website. There's a real clear spot to be able to schedule and take a tour of any of our schools. And that's been, uh, that's been a wonderful addition to what we're doing. 
you know, we're not only working on creating a great climate here in the district, but we're continuing to see great results. We're seeing achievement gaps continue to, to close, and we're seeing students perform extremely well across lots of different academic areas. A specific example is within our third grade reading scores for all students and within our student groups across both <laughs> racial and um, students serviced uh, through special programming. And so that's really exciting that the intentional efforts to work towards um, closing gaps through a personalized learning um, efforts is, is having an, the impact we want it to have. We're continually um, working towards improving those results and we're maintaining that tradition of excellence that we have. We also continue to see um, a high level of our graduates go on to post-secondary learning. And not only is it important that they're going on to those post-secondary learning opportunities, but when they get there, they're prepared and they're completing those post-secondary uh, education opportunities at rates that are among the highest in the state. Now this year we also went through um, some efforts um, to make sure that our brand and who we are is clearly communicated and represents our mission. And so we look good this year. We kept the tradition of that EP, we evolved it just a little bit, but we also brought together a team of staff, parents, community members, and district leadership to really look and, and try to refine and evolve that brand so it represents who we currently are. We previously had about 50 different logos that were representing Eden Prairie schools, um, including a few that contained illegal eagles. And so we have adjusted that. Um, and so we, we, as you can see in the brand, we've really kept that EP centered um, in the brand because it's such a strong part of our tradition, but we've continued to evolve who we are as we see that. We not only look good in there, but on the field, on the court, rink course, uh, track or pool, we also have updated that too. Um, so that it, base, it, it says and tells the high level of commitment and tradition of excellence of our schools. As a district, we continue to be a leader in personalized learning. This is a concept for us that came out of our strategic planning process in 2012 when we engaged thousands of community members. And it's represented um, strongly inside of our Designing Pathways work as well. Our staff works really hard on a daily basis to build strong connections and relationships with our students, be responsive to each student's academic needs, and maintain high levels of rigor um, through the development of 21st century skills. We want each of our students to, to come out of our schools with the ability to be able to collaborate, to be able to communicate effectively, to be able to be creative and to be able to think really critically about items. Those are the things and the skills that we continually hear from the business community that we want students to have. Our students have content knowledge and are able to, to use those skills, but even more importantly, we see that great success as they leave our schools because they have those 21st century skills um, as well. And then finally, we work really hard to continue to connect students' learning to their lives in authentic ways. And so I'm going to switch gears here for a second and, and let our students, staff, and parents speak just a little bit about their experience inside of our schools. My teachers are really supportive. I know that I can ask any question that I want in class confidently. They teach me very important things and they teach it in a fun way. I love Eden Prairie Schools because it's just an awesome place to be. Teachers, friends, math, art, community, learning, collaboration, connection, sports, my friends. In my classroom, I really focus on setting high standards for my students. I expect a lot of them, but I want them to expect that too. I want my kids to be creative. I want them to think critically. I want them to be communicators. I want them to collaborate with each other and work well with their peers. We're setting them up for success with the correct tools for what they need in the real world. It only takes a little bit of success for kids to realize, I like this feeling. I like doing well, and I want to continue. We inspire students every day. We believe in each student and we want the kids to know that as well. Teachers are intentional about building in talk with students about their personal lives, getting to know their habits and hobbies and likes and dislikes in order to build those into the lessons and units that they're planning for students. As a parent, you're looking for a place where your kids feel like they are more than just a face in the crowd. All the teachers know your children. The teachers know you. They know you by name. The positive learning environment helps the kids to be positive at home. The passion that the teachers have for the students, you can feel and see all the time. From the moment kids are walking in the doors, there's teachers and staff outside welcoming students in. 
they recognize your child's level of education and where they can be pushed, where they need extra help, and there's systems and processes to help or push. We specifically moved from Egan to put our son Gavin in Eden Prairie. We love the teachers, we love the smiles, we love the diversity. We just love that it's a welcoming community and a great place to be. So a lot of our work as we think about personalized learning and meeting the needs of each student was really made possible through the support of the community during the 2014 referendum. And so I want to take a moment to just thank the community for that support. We made several promises during that referendum and we've maintained those promises. One of the first promises we made was to lower kindergarten and first grade class sizes and we've done that. It's meant that our class sizes at kindergarten and first grade are among the lowest in the entire metropolitan area. The school board then came back in subsequent years and lowered second grade and third grade class sizes and they just heard a recommendation on Monday night um, that we lower the target for fourth grade class sizes as well. So we continue to maintain those low class sizes that were, that were promised during the referendum and we continue to expand that above um, what the promises of the referendum were. <clears throat> We also added uh, additional specialists in grades two through six that support our students and support our teachers. And so we added interventionists and coaches who work with our talented teaching staff to make sure that learning truly is personalized for each student. Those staff are continuously in and out of classrooms and it's not uncommon for me to walk into a classroom and see three, four, five adults inside of a classroom um, of 20 some students. Um, we also promised that the referendum dollars at that point in time would allow us to not make cuts for at least five years following passage of the referendum. Through sound planning, fiscal management, efficient operations, and support of the state, our latest projections show that those, those referendum dollars are going to allow us to maintain um, what we're currently doing through eight years and hopefully we can continue to extend that through the full 10 years of the, the referendum. And so we've, we've exceeded what, um, what we had promised at that point. We've continued to maintain that and do that um, with really strong fiscal stewardship and financial stewardship. Because of that long-term planning and support of the community, we've really been able to look at um, how do we maintain a flat level of taxing. And if you see where we sit here among our neighboring districts, we're doing pretty well. So we're getting great results for kids and we've got a great learning experience and um, on our, our estimated tax value of $350,000, our taxpayers are paying $1,500. Um, that's less than the state average and less than all but one of our neighbors. Last year when I was here um, presenting, I talked a little bit about designing pathways and provided an update. Um, and I have a new update this time. Um, if Just as a quick grounder or reminder, um, designing pathways really started as um, a process to design what our next 10 year academic vision looked like for our district. And so we engaged the community and we did a lot of work to make sure that we pulled in community voice and research um, and to really figure out what is that student experience that we want to have so that we can achieve our mission and achieve those board ends policies. So each of our students walks out of Eden Prairie Schools with the skills um, and knowledge that they need to be highly successful. And as soon as we developed that academic vision, we started moving the academic initiatives forward right away. One of the academic recommendations though re would require some updates to our facilities um, and some changes to the facilities. So in year two of designing pathways, we had teams come back together to really talk about what, do, what should those facilities changes um, be to be able to accomplish the academic outcomes that we wanted to achieve. And last year, um, when I provided the update, I talked about the fact that the school board was asking questions and gathering additional community input to really make sure that they were making a decision that it was in the best interest, uh, best long-term interest of our students, the community, and the district. And so um, on January 7th, uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, um, the school board approved a bond referendum question that will be on the ballot for May 14th. We know that having strong schools and safe schools means we'll have successful students and we'll be able to maintain um, the tradition of excellence that we have here in Eden Prairie. I wanna highlight a few of the, chan the changes that will take place if, the, if that bond referendum question passes on the 14th. 
One of the things that will happen is there will be updates to the middle school, which is about a 60-year-old building, and updates haven't taken place for over 25 years in that building. Um, and during that update, there will be some changes to move sixth grade students over into that building, um, which the design team came back and, and believes is a much more age-appropriate and academic-appropriate environment for those sixth grade students. There will be some updated learning environments and classrooms, some additional classrooms that are added. There will be collaborative space that is designed into that. Students will have um, access to better performing arts um, opportunities, including a theater space that will not only serve our students, but would also be accessible to the community for events and, and different things. Um, traffic flow, if you have students or if you're around CMS um, at any point in time in the morning or the afternoon, you'll know that's a need, and so some traffic flow will be improved and safer for students. Right now, I actually like it because I can go over across the parking lot at 10 a.m. to get a snack if I want because lunch starts at 10 a.m. for our middle school students, ends about 1. Um, with this update, we'll actually condense that eating space so that we can actually serve lunch at a more appropriate time um, for students. And then we'll increase choices along with maintain um, and strengthen our Spanish immersion experience that students already have access to. We'll transition our four-year-old preschool programming to the elementary schools, to the neighborhood elementary schools, because one of our commitments is to eliminate achievement disparities and making sure that we increase access um, to preschool opportunities for our students so they're prepared for kindergarten and ready to learn so they can meet our ENDS policies and we can achieve that mission. Within that, we'll also improve some traffic flow at elementaries. Um, we will make sure that we've got programming that's really set up to be able to um, engage our earliest learning learners early so they feel connected to their schools, teachers, and buildings. Our preschool teachers already collaborate with our kindergarten teachers to make sure that we've really got aligned academic learning experiences, but that will continue to be increased. Well, actually, one of our biggest barriers we always hear is actually transportation to preschool for our families, and so this will allow us to um, have dedicated preschool busing for all students. Um, and we'll need to make some updates, some slight updates to elementary sites to make sure that that um, can, can be uh, workable. The next portion of this would be to improve safety and security across all of our schools. All, of, all eight school sites um, will be impacted. There will be some additional exterior uh, entry security that will be put into the various sites, updates to communication systems, and then some other school safety projects like protective glass and some internal controls in terms of being able to lock down buildings. Across all of our schools, we'll also uh, be doing some updates to classroom spaces. It will allow us to update about half of the classrooms. We've started updating some, but this will allow us to accelerate that process to make sure that we've got great collaborative spaces that will help us work towards our students achieving those 21st century skills um, that I talked about earlier um, on as well. And so we'll be redesigning those classrooms um, for group work, for um, individual work, and it's been a really exciting process to see our teams of teachers, um, uh, leaders in the district, and students um, engaged in, in thinking about what should those spaces look like and what will that be. To do that, um, I had recommended to the board a $39.9 million bond, and that was what it was approved on a single question for that May 14th um, election. Those dollars will allow us to start the safety and security projects immediately. It will allow us to start um, working on the personalized learning um, spaces immediately. And in order to get the construction done for middle school and elementary um, construction, that would we'd be looking at opening the new facility spaces fall of 2021. So that will be a couple year process to do that. The tax impact of that $39.9 million bond um, would be about $6.50 per month um, on a home value of $350,000. Um, and this is what that does to that tax impact that we talked about. So we would move just slightly ahead of Hopkins. We would still remain below the state average in terms of tax impact on our homes, and we'd still remain well under Wyzetta, Edina, Burnsville, Minnetonka, Eastern Carver, and Shakopee. So, um, with that, um, I want to just close by saying I'm so incredibly proud. I get, to, I get to be out in our schools on a regular basis and see the great things that are happening. 
We have such a talented staff that are just doing great things for kids on a daily basis. I'm really honored to be able to serve as superintendent and be able to work with that team of people. And I'm just thankful to be here today and get to present our update. And so thank you for being here today and I'm gonna turn it over to Rick to talk a little bit about the city. We're going to do a little bit of uh, hooking up the, the presentation here. So while Nick's doing that, I've got some introductions as well. So we have with us today our Eden Prairie Mayor, Ron Case. Uh, City Council Member, Mark Freiber. And then I know if you could raise your hands, the uh, various city staff members out there, we have Janet Jeremiah, our community development director, uh, Joyce Lorenz, our communications manager, uh, Johnny Germscheid, our communications uh, coordinator and podcast producer as well. And then uh, I mentioned Nick with, with IT. Wow, I, I don't think I would come out here today if I didn't have to speak. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is pretty good. Uh, you guys... Uh, I'm very impressed. And, and also, you know, I was just thinking about this too, and I don't, you know, this must be a sign of aging. I'm always looking at signs of aging, but when um, you're older than the high school principal, no offense, Con. Um, I don't know. I, nice to meet you, Rob, but you're supposed to be older than I am. So I was thinking, state of the city. And I'm thinking I usually kind of like to have some type of theme, you know, a little bit of a twist. and. I'm in, a, I'm in our living room and I'm, I'm looking through a book called A Thousand and One Record Albums That Everybody Should Own. And I've got a book called 101 Places That Everybody Should Visit. And my daughter is recently watching the movie 10 Things I Hate About You. <laughs> so I thought, why don't we do 10 Things I Love About the Status of the City of Eden Prairie? Let's kind of do a, a little countdown here through the 10 things I love about Eden Prairie. And so, first of all, we're just going to work our way down so you guys are going to know when I'm done. Pat's going to give me the five-minute call, but we're going to know as we work through the countdown how things are going. And Pat talked about the first item. Um, you know, when you go back to 10 things, our planning commission uh, stated that there were 10 major uh, projects, development projects, that they approved and that are under construction in this past year. And Pat mentioned uh, Shields is one of those, so you can kind of see that um, that's well underway and will be open in 2020. In terms of 10 other development projects, another project you may be familiar with is Elevate at Southwest Station. That is a mixed-use, transit-oriented uh, development project. It's going to be a six-story apartment complex, 222 apartment units, and then 13,000 square feet of retail below that's currently under construction right now. So that's a major project. Someone had mentioned that there's at least, what, four or five different cranes in the middle of our community right now working on different <coughs> development projects. Another project that the city council recently approved that's not yet under construction is a, a development, a multi-generational housing development that's gonna be taking place on Eden Prairie Road near Highway 212, and it's called Smith Village. It's near the, the Smith Coffee Shop, our historic property uh, in that area, if you're familiar with that. And that's gonna be actually three different um, products. You're gonna have a 100-unit uh, senior development kind of on the vacant property behind the church that exists on the corner of Eden Prairie Road and 212, and actually where the church sits will be a 58 unit, 90% affordable workforce housing development. And between those two will be uh, six for sale townhomes. So that's a big development project that's coming as well. Then I wanna highlight a couple other senior housing projects that are under construction right now. Prairie Bluffs over near Highway 169 and Hennepin Town Road Pioneer Trail has been approved for quite some time but that's gonna be 138 unit um, senior development, assisted living and memory care units and quite a few amenities associated with that. So you can see the construction underway there. And then if we go back to the town center area, 
again near where the library is being currently renovated and across from the mall is the uh, Southview Senior Living Project. And that's similar to Prairie Bluffs, but that's a 116 um, unit project. And there are, there are many more. These are the big ones that I wanted to highlight in addition to the Hampton Inn that's going in on Technology Drive and near Flying Cloud Drive. So that's going in where the IHOP is. So that's been approved and construction should be starting in that area. So there's many more than, than 10 of these projects, but that kind of gives you that, that high level look at some of the development in our community. Actually, if I think about the number 10, our city, the city of Eden Prairie, if we were to sell the city, we're gonna put the city on the market, it's worth a little over $10 billion. So the value of our community is about um, $10 billion and growing. So that's a positive thing. Pat talked about that. Nine, number nine. Nine represents, and, and Josh talked about this as well with taxes, nine out of 10 cities in uh, the state or in the metro area, it, it lines up with both, have um, higher taxes than the city of Eden Prairie. So depending on the, the area that you look at, this is a representation of suburbs in the Twin Cities metro area that are similar in size in Eden Prairie. What that city tax is on a median valued home in Eden Prairie, um, in this comparison, we're the fourth lowest of those communities. Josh had a similar graph when it comes to the school district. We measure up even better if you look at cities that are smaller or you look statewide. And uh, we are giving, we will be giving Edina a run for their money because I think of the, the cities that actually have the lower city tax right now, uh, the tax levy that our city council passed this past year is, is lower than those communities. So what does that mean? That means if you own a $2 million commercial property in Eden Prairie, the total tax impact on the city tax to you is one half of 1%. And if you own the median valued home in Eden Prairie, your home is worth $396,000. That's a 4% increase or just under a 4% increase from last year. So your value went up 4%, but your taxes go up about 1.2% or $15 for the entire year. Eight, what does eight represent? Eight represents eight brand new outdoor pickleball courts at Starring Lake Park. <laughs> so we see our former mayor in the uh, top right, pickleball was uh, kind of a passion for her as well, but the, the entire city council in the community, we've heard from our residents that pickleball is very popular and many of these courts, dedicated outdoor courts, are what people wanna see. So we opened up eight new courts in addition to rebuilding our basketball courts, our tennis courts, and our sand volleyball courts at Starring Lake Park. Um, yeah, that's me and the park and rec director down there at the, the bottom left um, trying to win a tournament. But also at Starring Lake, while we're on the topic of Starring Lake, a project that the city's working on this coming year is to replace the park building that's at that location. So that's a few decades old, it's not ADA accessible, it's very dated, a project that the council saw plans on and will be bidding on and constructing later this year, involves an updated building, the ability to have really nice sight lines of the sledding hill and the skate rink that are a huge part of that area, some meeting space as well. So we've got a new building that's gonna be under construction here this year and, and an updated picnic shelter, just a nice addition to the park. I, I could show eight or nine slides on, on the different park improvements that we've had over the last couple of years at Starring and Round Lake and Riley Lake Park. There's a lot going on. Seven, what does seven stand for? Seven stands for at least seven different ways that you can engage with our city and community. We've got everything from our uh, city website to many of our social media outlets. We have interactive web tools that we use. Uh, C Click Fix is one of my favorites. If you leave here today and you download an app called C Click Fix and there's anything you see, you see a pothole, you see a street light out, you see anything amiss, you just see it, you click it, and we'll fix it. It goes straight to the person um, at the city who's responsible for dealing with um, follow up to that. But we're also, as I said, engaged in um, social media as well. So at any given time, anybody could sign up 
for 30 different topic areas of the city. So in just the last week alone, you could have gotten an alert from the city about programs being closed due to cold weather, that there might be a development project in your specific neighborhood that we would put on next door. You might have seen a police blog about why the police department idles their cars. You might hear about a new podcast that came out, the city council packet is out, or just kind of any neighborhood issue on all these different platforms and the tens of thousands of people that are signed up for those uh, social media outlets, we want to make sure we, we communicate and engage. Six. Six stands for at least six major sustainability projects that our city and city council are, are looking at. We have a program called Sustainable Eden Prairie, and it mainly covers four big areas for us. That's energy conservation, water conservation, waste reduction and enhancing our pollinator habitat. If you were at the um, Edenopoly presentation that I gave last year, there was a, a feature on a lot of sustainability work that we're doing. A couple that I'll highlight will be um, what are known as energy uh, squad visits that are part of a partnership with Xcel Energy and our energy action plan that our city has. And uh, you know this has been spoken about at, at different meetings, rotary meetings, chamber meetings, and people still um, never cease to be amazed that for $100 and actually $50 because the city's done a buy down on these visits, for $50, a partnership with the city and Excel Energy, they'll come out and they'll swap out your light bulbs for more energy efficient light bulbs. They'll upgrade your shower head. They may install a new programmable thermostat. They'll just kind of take in and analyze your entire home. And it's a program that we feel that we not only need to conserve energy for with our city operations, and we've been doing that, we want to do more of that, such as electrifying our fleet, that'll be coming up, but we also want to partner with our residents in the community to allow them to save energy so the entire carbon footprint of the entire city is reduced. When it comes to other um, areas of sustainability at our fire station near Olympic Hills, we have a water reuse project. I think I talked about this last year where we had a grant where we were able to recapture all the water that fell on top of the fire station and was then the water was reused to wash the trucks and um, water the grounds. But we don't have to water much of the grounds because we have some uh, native um, plantings that are occurring there. Also, in terms of waste reduction, our city council is looking at the construction of the first uh, Eden Prairie Yard Waste site. There is not a place at Eden Prairie currently where you can take your branches or your leaves to actually drop them off. And we're considering, actually, we budgeted for, budgeted for the construction of a yard waste drop-off site. I don't think you'll be able to bring glass, grass clippings there, but it's something that we're looking forward to for you know, the, the tree branches in the spring and, and the leaves in the fall. Down to five. Five minutes to go, five things to cover. Uh, five council members, five new council members. So people are surprised when, you know, if you don't follow the business of city government, having the same five city council members for eight years is not necessarily a common thing. This was a group of people that worked together for a long period of time, but now with the recent election, we have a new city council, we have a new mayor that was introduced. We have two new council members, Mark, who's here as well, and then P.G. Narayan, who was appointed at our last meeting, joining Kathy Nelson, who won re-election, and Brad Aho, who is in the middle of his term. This council is going to be spending quite a bit of time this spring and summer doing some long-range, long-range and short-term strategic planning. So there isn't a lot um, of detail yet on some of the long-range items, but I do know from some of the um, discussions in the fall and into the current years, housing is a very important issue. Life cycle housing, workforce housing, affordable housing, all types of housing. When we updated our city's uh, 10 year or 30 year strategic plan, we have to do that every 10 years, we brought in several different people to weigh in on issues related to housing and that's gonna be a big issue with the city council. As our uh, city events and community engagement, we wanna be able to still uh, maintain these high quality events and have new events like the People Fest event that embraced our diversity last summer, but we also want to be able to plan for uh, future generations of Eden Prairie residents and also ask our seniors, are we providing what we need? Asking our youth, are we serving um, the city 
in a proper way. So we need to continue to do that. Four. Four stands for a couple things. First thing is four decades ago. Four decades ago, and I wish he was here. Dave Lindahl, Dave Lindahl could not make it, but that's Dave Lindahl four decades ago, our economic development manager and a former police chief and lieutenant four decades ago. When those pictures were being taken, people were talking about Southwest Light Rail Transit. It's been four decades of discussion. But in addition to that, and Pat covered this as well, there are um, four light rail stops in Eden Prairie that are planned. And what's funny is there was a time when there were five. It was going to go all the way to um, City Center and Mitchell Road. Then there were going to be three because the town center station had been taken out. So now we, we are back to four. Construction starting this spring, kind of at all points along the line into downtown. Pat mentioned this, construction mitigation is a huge issue for us. The fact that almost all crossings are at or not at grade is very a uh, positive thing for Eden Prairie and we'll be expecting our first uh, riders in, in 2023. So obviously the Jan Callison, the Hennepin County Board, they are a huge, huge part of all the work that led us to this point as well. Three. Three stands for at least three significant pieces of public art that have been uh, deployed. We were able to receive a, a grant from the National Education Association and we've been able to, to, to deploy public art throughout the community. And these are rotating pieces of public art that you're gonna see more of. And in addition to that, we, as you see in other cities, are taking um, kind of unsightly irrigation boxes or other utility boxes and then putting some different public art in different locations to spruce that up a little bit. Two, Pat teased us up earlier. He did not see my presentation. Two stands for two new pizza places and two new places to get beer. So um, in pizza, Pat talked about Pizza Luce. Pizza Karma is another place that opened up recently. And when it comes to beer, we actually had two tap rooms, two breweries that were looking at Eden Prairie at the same time. One of them would have actually relocated from Northeast Minneapolis, and I think they're going into Minnetonka. But the other one called Fat Pants Brewery is going into the Panino Brothers property that's the bottom left, that's over near where Prairie Center Drive comes near Flying Cloud, the building that Punch Pizza in Witch Witch is in. There will be a brewery there this year. So, question answered. And there is other new retail. We've got the Culver's relocation. We've got the, at the Lunds Byerly's that relocated due to Southwest Light Rail. We've got the FedEx. We've got another other number of openings. And lastly, one. What does one stand for? One is our number one priority as a community is the baseline level of services that we provide, keeping everyone safe. I mean, our police department, our fire department, our public works department is a 24 seven operation. And maybe if you think of Maslow's hierarchy as a city, before we could talk about tap rooms and breweries and high end development and park and recreation programs, we need to have a top notch response and police and fire and snow plowing and public works. So that's always um, number one in our community and at a rate that is affordable, is a value to you as a taxpayer, whether you're a resident or a business. So with that, oh, zero. I do have another number. You know, it's interesting, Pat. <laughs> Usually there's a little back and forth between me being a Wisconsin native Green Bay Packer fan. And yeah, there's a few of us out there. And yeah, Elaine, we're from both from the same hometown. And uh, Mr. Minnesota Viking over there. So I just have to remind him. I have to remind him. <laughs> you know, I thought last year when I was here, somebody was in the NFC Championship game, but not to be, not to be this year either. But either way, oh, and today's temperature, I believe, right? That's another, that's another number to end on. So the last thing, if I have a couple seconds and thinking of the temperature, I always like to bring a, a little bit of swag to, to do a little bit of a giveaway. And I have here these nice new era City of Eden Prairie. You can be staff. So if you head out to one of our ice rinks, not today, maybe tomorrow or Friday, you can uh, kind of wear the hat. So maybe we'll do some trivia if I have a second to do this, Pat, before you wrap up. Um, 
The Vikings have won zero Super Bowls. How many Super Bowls have the Green Bay Packers won? Well, somebody raised their hand, though. <laughs> Who said it first? Was that you, Troy? All right. It was on Next. the screen. So. <laughs> it was. There were four trophies. Well, it's just make sure you're paying attention. How many fire stations are there in Eden Prairie? Who said that first? Did he really? Yeah. Awesome. This is yours. Thank I'll bring it back to you. You bet. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>